Hi everyone, Sam Sorbo here. So I published an op-ed in the Washington Times called The Liberalism Virus Infects Our Schools. And so I wanna to talk to you about that briefly because there are a lot of parents out there who are getting very anxious about the idea of continuing to send their kids to school. Now, part of the anxiety stems from the fact that we've been taught, if you went to government schools growing up, and most of us did, you've been taught that you can't uh, do anything that uh, the educators can do at home. That it's just, it's too hard, it's, um, uh, it's, it's not feasible, uh, they know better, you don't know enough, and so basically there's a culture in our education system today that teaches people that they can't. Just, just quite simply. I, I like to simplify things. Now, of course, there are exceptions to every rule, but the general rule is people say to me, because as you know, I'm the home educator, right? And people say to me, oh, I could never do that. I, I, I don't know how. I, I don't even know where to start. And so today I want to talk to you briefly about how to get started because there are a lot of people out there who are now having to consider other options aside from, government, uh, aside from the government schools, especially because of the coronavirus or the Wuhan virus or the, the new flu, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so to that end, I thought I could take a few minutes today and talk to you folks about that. I've been very blessed that uh, a lot of people have come up to me recently um, hearing my talks and saying to me, you know, your videos were the reason that we started homeschooling, which makes me very happy. So I thought, well, I'll put another one out today. So the liberalism virus infects our schools. That takes a, a, a more political sort of viewpoint over why we should choose to homeschool or choose Christian schools over the, the standard uh, education fair that the government offers. And the reason is because the government teaches liberalism. Um, the government teaches that socialism is reasonable and fair and, um, and appropriate when, frankly, all evidence to the contrary. I know we have uh, uh, presidential candidates who are, uh, who are running on a socialist platform, and it boggles my mind because socialism and communism, and they are the same, they're the same, has killed over 100 million people in the past uh, century. And so we need to be very, very careful about this. And certainly we ought to be very careful about uh, teaching our children that that is a better, uh, a better course of action, that socialism is the better course of action. So um, I won't dwell on the article. Uh, I've gotten a lot of commentary about the article, and I'm, and I'm thrilled with that. By the way, if you want to reach out to me, go to samsorbo.com. That's samsorbo.com, very easy. Uh, and you can email me from there. Okay. So, uh, so I want to talk to you about how easy, how easy it is to home educate. And the first thing that we'll do is um, I want to talk to you about this, the uh, uh, Homeschool Legal Defense Association. They have put out, and I think it's pretty cool, they've put out this quick start guide for homeschoolers. And I love that because why not, you know, it, it is actually very simple. So I have my book here, and my book is... Um, basically, it's called They're Your Kids. It's, and, and ultimately, it's really just how, why you should homeschool and how easy it is. It simply is not as hard as the educators uh, would like you to believe. Why? Because they want job security. So they want you to think you can't do it. Same thing with a plumber, frankly. And look, I love plumbers, right? But they come over to your house, and typically, the last thing they want to do is tell you, hey, you know, you didn't need to call me. All you had to do was switch this knob and that would have, you know, made your problem go away or whatever, right? Typically, they're more interested in job security as, as well they should be. Like, I totally get it, right? We can't, um, we can't legislate greed away. And, uh, and so what we do in a capitalist society is we harness the greed and we make it work for, for society in general, right? Okay. I'm getting way off topic. I want to talk to you about how easy it is to homeschool. HSLDA, just go to hslda.org, and uh, they have this thing about getting started. You'll find it on their website, Seven Simple Steps to Start Homeschooling. Um, the first part is, is basically the, the real basics. Stuff comes up we don't expect. Sometimes we have to pivot on a dime. Homeschooling can work for your child, and here's how to jump in and get going fast. 
And so I want to go through a couple of the things that they suggest and then uh, some of the, the commentary that I have about that first. Connect with parents who are already homeschooling. This is just the standard. This is, this is what I tell every time I speak. This is what I say to parents. I get that you're nervous. I was nervous too. When I first started, I was very nervous. I was very anxious. And I said to my husband, just the first part of the year, just the four months, September to December, and then we'll see. And then I'd love to say that I never looked back, but that's not true. Um, it's in my book. Uh, I did look back and I, and I switched it up again and then I switched it up again and now I'm, I'm just full in for home education. But there are other ways to get it done. The great thing about home education is the relationship that you will have with your child. And I can't stress that enough. It is not what you think, especially if your children are already in public schools. If your children go to government schools, then your relationship with them has already been compromised. So don't take your relationship, your current relationship with your child as sort of a standard that um, that, that you, because I have parents say to me, oh my gosh, no, I would kill my child by Wednesday, which, um, hello, seriously, but okay, so you don't have a great relationship with your child. That is a result of you sending your child away from you for many hours in the day, more hours in the day than you get to spend with them. So the whole equation is off. Um, the second thing that HSLDA says, and I'm a huge fan, I wouldn't be doing this if I weren't, I'm a huge fan of HSLDA, so plug for them, um, is get to know your state's homeschool law. And of course, they offer the opportunity for you to call them and find out stuff if you if you join the organization, which I highly recommend that you do if you choose to to explore homeschooling. They do a great job and they will get you started on your way with all of the um, information that you need uh, legally to home educate. Luckily here in the United States, 50 states do uh, provide for a legal path to home education. Okay, and then they, they, they say explore your child's learning preference, your teaching style, and your educational approach. Now I like this, but to me it, it overburdens the parent. Um, it's, it certainly is clever to do that, uh, but when you're first getting started, and of course it depends on the age of the children that we're talking about, um, I don't know how necessary it is to sort of delve into becoming a, a well-researched educator for your children. I think, that, I think that we take an entirely misguided approach to education because we all grew up in the system, but the system's not getting it done anymore. And so we need to reevaluate the system, and that requires us to reevaluate how we define education, how we look at education, how how we how we categorize education what we think education is um so right now in our in our schools we're we're told that education is college prep and career readiness all evidence to the contrary i don't know what you do with that um first of all college prep well that just makes it sound like a ponzi scheme because if the whole idea of our education system is to prepare you to go spend a lot of money at a higher institution you know, there are a lot of kids that go to college who go to college who really probably don't need to go to college, like shouldn't really consider going to college. So I'm just saying, um, their, their step three, I would say just go and connect with those parents and talk to them about how they get it done. Uh, I would uh, absolutely recommend reading my book, They're Your Kids, An Inspirational Journey from Self-Doubter, that's me, to Homeschool Advocate, again, that's me now, now that I've gone through it. Um, and I'll tell you, year after year, the farther out I, I distance myself from the education system in which I grew up, the more I understand how polluted it is. Um, okay, then they say find your child's curriculum. You know, depending on the age of the child, pursue reading pursue some writing with them, pursue some mathematics with them. Don't get bogged down with this idea of, oh my gosh, I have to go and purchase a whole bunch of books. Purchase books, sure, but you don't have to run out and get all set up. Like I know parents who, when they first started to home educate, they set up a room in their house and they had 
little desks with little chairs and they put a blackboard on the wall. Heck, I had a blackboard on my wall because I thought, well, I'll, I'll put it. I, honestly, I don't even know what I was thinking. It was fun. It was fun to draw things on the blackboard, but we never used it for school. Um, education should happen organically. Children are natural learners. They're born inquisitive and curious. What you really want to do is inspire that curiosity, is uh, ignite that inquisitiveness. Find the things that they're fascinated by. And sure, throw in some of the other stuff that, that you know is necessary for them to learn. But, um, but don't, don't subscribe to the, um, the educational parameters that the institution wants to impose upon you mainly because the institution isn't getting it done. So what do they know? We really need, here's the thing, we ought to be having a crisis of faith with our education system. And we're not. Everybody knows that it's broken. But nobody's actually like willing to sort of try to fix it. I mean, I know Betsy DeVos is doing her part. Um, other people out there are trying to do their part. But, but what I'm saying is nobody's really calling it out for what it is. Why? Because we've all been conditioned to not criticize. In fact, right at the beginning of my book, there's a quote here. This is uh, Fichte, who, um, who was basically, he influenced the entire public school movement here in the United States. And it starts like this, education should aim at destroying free will so that after pupils are thus schooled, they will be incapable throughout the rest of their lives of thinking or acting otherwise than as their schoolmasters would have wished. They will be incapable of doing other than what their schoolmasters want them to do or would want them to do. And that's where we are today. That's why I do what I do. Okay. Number four, they suggest finding your child's curriculum. That's fine. Number five, decide where you will homeschool and create your neat, unique school schedule. So do get an idea of what, how, you see, how you see school happening, okay? Some people, gosh, there are people out there who are unschooling. That means that they don't have any structure for their schools. Um, that's not the way that I do it. We started at 9 a.m. every morning. You'll, if you get my book, I tell the whole story about how we started and what I did and how I got it set up and stuff. Um, but it's not, I'm sorry, it's just not rocket science. It's not this huge thing that's, that's difficult and dangerous and hard and, and confusing. It's just not. You're dealing with children. Inspire them to learn. Learn with them. That's the other secret of homeschooling that I think people don't really quite understand is is how amazing it is for the parents, how empowering it is as a parent to be able to guide your child's education and also to, to not have to deal with other people's input into your child's education where their input is actually to the child seemingly more important and, and more relevant and, and more crucial than your own as the parent. That's number five. Number six, enjoy the learning process. Plan to reevaluate with your kids periodically and change anything that isn't working for you. I love that advice. Look at it as a, as a fluid time because your children will grow and change and you also will change as you go along. So don't think that as you start that you're going to get it perfect and it's going to stay that way for the rest of the time that you homeschool. Right? In fact, people used to ask me when I first started, well, how long do you think you're going to homeschool for? And I used to say, well, through college if I can. I don't know. <laughs> it's, not, it's not cut and dried. But we are conditioned to think that it is because we went to school and there was a bell. And at the bell, what would you do? You got up and you walked where you were supposed to go and then you sat down. Boy, I mean, school, if school isn't about behavior modification, I don't know what is. All right. Uh, number seven, celebrate and highlight your students' growth and achievement. Amen to that. We need to, we need to highlight our children's achievements at the same time as we, uh, as we gently criticize and correct and help them become the people that we hope that they would be. Okay? 
So that's 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 the that, that's the whole sort of thing. If you want to go to HSLDA, they have links up with all of those suggestions that they make, and you can go um, check out the links and check out the different suggestions that they have um, because they they do offer uh, uh, more ways to to find out more, right? And if you'd like to go to samsorbo.com and get my book, please do. If you have a friend that you'd like to get my book for, please do. Um, they're for sale at samsorbo.com. And I urge you, urge you, urge you as parents of y the youth of this nation. Uh, oh, and do go, if you get a chance to read the, uh, the op-ed, I think you'll enjoy it. But as parents of the youth of this nation, you are entrusted with the future. And you're entrusted with the gift of your progeny. So consider, now that you're, now that you're considering, maybe the schools are dangerous because of the virus, consider maybe they're dangerous for other reasons and you just, your eyes weren't open to it. Maybe the virus is, is allowing us to see things that we weren't able to see before. So I urge you to consider that. Thanks so much for listening.